Hey guys, I'm back. I first want to apologize for the massive break between videos. I'm much busier than I'd hope, and sadly that has made my video output slow down to a trickle, so I'm sorry. I'm trying my hardest to get videos out where I can, uh, so yeah. Anyways, I'd like to do something different before we get back to the final part of my 10,000 BC series. It's been a long time since I've talked about speculative biology and speculative evolution, and I'd love to take another fictional organism and suggest a what-if scenario in which they could exist, and how, and discuss all the interesting biomechanical and evolutionary factors that would go into that. And, because I'm a huge fan of Game of Thrones, I decided to make this one about giant humanoids. This is the biology of giants. Giants, colossi, and titans, stories and legends of giant humans of great strength and size can be found in basically every culture around the globe. The most famous of them is likely the gargantuan Philistine, Goliath of Gath, who is recorded in the Hebrew biblical book of Samuel. In the legend, he is said to be one of the greatest warriors in the ancient world. However, the future Israelite king, David, remarkably was able to slay and decapitate him nonetheless. The exact height of the giant is uncertain, because although modern and more recent copies of the book of Samuel state his height was six cubits in a span, or nine feet nine inches, or about three meters, the oldest copies, such as the Dead Sea Scrolls, the first historian Josephus, and the 4th century Septuagint manuscripts all claim Goliath was considerably shorter and had a much more realistic height, standing four cubits in a span, six feet nine inches, or about two meters about as tall as James Comey, and was still considered extremely tall for its time period. The almost 10-foot-tall height was probably a much later change, either the result of a translation error over the centuries, or an intentional revision or alteration to make Goliath's defeat much more fantastical and epic. Whatever the answer is, it is lost to history. Other cultures speak of giants as well. One's much more forgotten. There were the Cyclopses of the Greeks, who lived on islands and were fond of cannibalism. There was Grendel of the Anglo-Saxons, a beast-like being that was said to be very terrible to look upon. There was the Deiterabuchi of Japan, a colossal yokai that posed as mountains while they slept. And countless others. Even the first stories ever recorded by humans into clay contained giants. The Epic of Gilgamesh records the story of the great Sumerian king of Uruk, as well as a giant demigod and hero, Gilgamesh as well as his adversary, the giant demon of the cedar forest, Humbaba, whose face in some translations was like stirring intestines, and whose penis was a venomous serpent. Both Humbaba and Gilgamesh were very prevalent in early lore and mythologies, and can be considered the very first Harry Potter and Voldemort, or Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader of the ancient world. Depictions of both giants can be found everywhere, in dig sites and temples in Mesopotamia, Babylon, and Sumer. The once canonical biblical book of giants even mentions Gilgamesh and Humbaba in passing as two of the giant Nephilim, or the offspring of lesser gods or angels and mortal women, that existed before the flood. This book was once considered just as much a part of the Bible as Exodus or Genesis, but has since been disowned. One can only imagine how interesting Sunday school teachings about Humbaba would be. With so many stories of giants tracing all the way back to ancient history, one might think these beings might have even existed, but in contrary to many photoshopped pictures claim, archaeological and scientific evidence has so far shown no indication that supports the existence of any of these giant human myths, and it is likely they were exaggerations of the truth if not based on imagination entirely. Gigantism was in fact often used to either glorify someone as the descendant of the gods, or demonize them as an aberration against nature, so it's no surprise some people would try to make them up. And, regardless of how fictional they are, to this day, giants still exist in our stories and culture, in our books, in our video games, in our movies, and in our TV shows. When you think about it, giants are as much a part of our culture today as they used to be. There's just something about massive, towering versions of ourselves that inspire awe and fear into us. But, I'd like to still ask... What if humans evolved to a much greater height and size? What would they look like, and what implications would that have on our biology, anatomy, and evolution? Well, that's why I'm here, isn't it? Okay, so first off is if humans are even capable of reaching giant heights. The tallest a humanoid ever got in all of history that was verifiable by science was 8 foot 11 inches. The man's name was Robert Wadlow, and he lived for only about 22 years, from the early to mid-1900s. Robert was massive and towered high above literally every human being that ever existed, that we know of anyway. His unusual height, as is the case in most giant humans, was due to an overproduction or hypersecretion of human growth hormone produced by a tumor in his pituitary gland, which resulted in abnormal growth from childhood and typically well into adulthood. 
The hormone is overproduced and as a result does not tell the body to stop growing at a certain point, as it does in normal humans. In fact, some giants don't even show signs of stopping growth before their death. Robert, for instance, would have grown taller. It might have become the real version of the fantastical nine-foot Goliath if it weren't for his death. Additionally, gigantism seems to sometimes be passed down genetically as a mutant gene. So, it's certainly possible for a branch of humans, if it be Homo sapiens or our close relatives of the same genus, to possibly break off and evolve a greater height. I'm just going to say one of 10 to 14 feet tall, or about 4 meters, like in Game of Thrones. The only issue is staying alive to reach it. The main problem with giants is the fact that the human body is specifically evolved for a certain height limit. Probably somewhere around 2 meters or 6 foot 5-ish is where our anatomy starts to reach its physical limit. Our specific proportions, organs, musculature, bones, etc. are best suited for an average human height. Anything higher than that, and our body is put under much more stress and starts to break down. And that is why so many giants, the vast majority of them, are riddled with health issues, and sadly, why they typically die so young. Almost all giant humans suffer from a myriad of circulatory, skeletal, and musculature issues, with most of these stemming from the fact that their heart is put under an extreme amount of stress than normal, and must work double, if not triple, if not more, to fight against the pull of gravity, and simply the large amount of space they must transport blood to. Another big problem is the massive amount of extra weight put on muscles and bones. The square cube law has to do with the relationship between volume and an area of a shape. I'm simplifying it, but all you need to know is that when a shape increases its size, let's just say this cube doubles its height, that doesn't mean the cube's volume is doubled. Its volume, in actuality, is eight times as big as it was earlier. The volume of an object grows much faster than its height. The square cube law is especially significant when we are discussing giants, as it is important to understand that with each and every foot we increase to the human height, the weight of this hypothetical human increases exponentially. For instance, let's just say we have a six foot tall man who weighs 170 pounds. Using the square cube law, if we wanted to have a proportional human who was 10 feet tall, he would weigh somewhere around eight times as much. That massive amount of weight is now putting pressure on bones that only evolved to support a weight 170 pounds, and certainly not enough surface area to distribute that weight. Such weight has the capacity to break bones, and is the reason why so many giants require leg braces and canes to combat the downward pull of gravity on their bodies. If we continue to increase the height higher and higher, we'll get to a point where the human body shape and proportions would simply be entirely unable to be capable of leaning upright and standing up even briefly, as they quite literally would collapse right under their own weight. The only way to combat such an issue is to grow thicker bones and stronger muscles to compensate, but we run into a bit of a paradox here, as the thicker bones and muscles would add more weight, and thus require thicker bones and stronger muscles, and so on. Less necessary body parts and organs that contribute to the weight would need to be sacrificed to make room for bones and muscles, but I will talk about that later. You see, because of this, giants wouldn't look exactly like a normal human. Shape, proportion, and other physical traits would need to be sacrificed for maintaining such a size. Unlike most depictions of giants, real 10 foot tall to 14 foot tall humanoids wouldn't look like regular humans with the same exact proportions just scaled up. Humans would have to change their figure significantly. As evolution has shown us, certain adaptations are necessary for maintaining large sizes which have developed in the animal kingdom several times independently. First of all, the legs would need to be much more pillar-like or column-like. Humans are at a disadvantage against other animals, because as bipeds we must be able to put all our body weight to be distributed on a single leg at a time, simply because of the way we walk. It would probably be the best if these giants had elephantine or sauropod-like legs that were very thick-boned and muscled. Other parts of the body, like the spinal column, abdominal region, etc., would need to be reinforced and would probably be just like the legs thicker and wider in order to spread the weight more horizontally across a wider surface area instead of vertically on a smaller surface area. For this reason, giants would look very stocky and hefty. The feet themselves would need to be like the legs, much more pillar or elephantine in shape. Unlike our long and narrow feet, the bases of these humanoids would need to be stubbier and more circular, just like the extremities of many real-life giants throughout history, like the sauropods, as well as plenty of other dinosaurs, elephants, rhinos, giraffes, etc., etc. The heart would definitely need to increase in strength and size momentously to cope with the newfound gravitational demands. The hearts of giraffes can weigh 25 pounds and be 2 feet long and must maintain double the amount of blood pressure in order to survive than a human's. The hearts of elephants are 26 to 46 pounds and their blood vessels must be wide and thick to withstand the large amount of pressure put on them. Giraffes and other giant animals additionally have a complex pressure regulatory system in their bodies, one of them being called the Rite Mirabile, which prevents excess blood flow to the brain when they lower their heads. 
Adaptations like this protect the animal from possibly fatal disturbances. Anyone who has been lying down and got up too fast knows this dizzy, disorientating feeling. However, on a giraffe or a larger animal, it could be very deadly. Additionally, because there is so much pressure caused by the great amount of fluid weighing down on them, the blood vessels in the legs of giraffes are covered in thick, extremely tight layer of skin that prevents too much blood from pouring out of them when they are injured or cut. Perhaps the giant human would need a bunch of these adaptations to survive as well. These structures, as said before, would add an excess amount of weight onto the pre-existing weight problem. To solve this paradox, the simple solution is to lose the weight that is not necessary and only save the bare minimum. Brain size would probably be the first up. Some mental capabilities not necessary for survival would need to be weeded out of the population, and consequently the large cranium size of Homo sapiens along with it. The arms and upper body strength would perhaps additionally shrink proportionally to the rest of the body. Fingers, wingspan, etc. might be stubbier to account for this conservation of weight. In summary, a larger heart, thicker blood vessels, a few specially evolved adaptations for maintaining blood pressure and equilibrium in the circulatory system, Thicker bones and stronger muscles would need to be necessary for giants. Giant humans would need to look much more broad, squat, and have thick column-like legs, abdominals, and feet. Brain size would need to shrink alongside several other adaptations to shrink the overall weight down as much as possible. This hypothetical race of 10 to 14 foot tall giants, I will call Homo Goliathus, would be a people that were built wider than normal humans in their proportions and would probably look like stretched out and distorted men and women. They would be a simple, not so sophisticated culture due to the reduction of brain size, probably more in line with the intelligence of Homo erectus and other early humans as opposed to Homo sapiens and probably even Neanderthals, probably at very best using sticks and stone tools. However, they would be an incredibly imposing species capable of delivering an unbelievably powerful kick and would be easily able to crush a man under their immense weight and strength. If giant humans of this size ever evolved, which they could have if the environmental conditions favored early hominids to do so, they might look something like this. Also, it's important to understand that these proportions I theorize are for only a giant humanoid of 10 to 14 feet of height. Different heights would require different adaptations and specifications. The rule of thumb is the taller your giant, the more and more traits and shapes would be sacrificed for supporting the weight, and the less quote-unquote human they would look. A giant more in line with those of the Titans in Attack on Titan would probably look more like this. Who knows, two legs might not even be able to support that size at all, and they might need to revert to a quadrupedal stance. And, organisms of this size probably would need bones composed of an entirely different substance than collagen and calcium. At the end of the day, it's just important to not make the same mistake of our ancestors by believing giant humanoids would simply be scaled-up versions of humans, with the same proportions and everything. Giant humans wouldn't look like this, but something like this. Giant animals have specific adaptations for their lifestyles, and it's more complicated than just scaling it up. Now, looking back to Game of Thrones, I gotta say, their giants are, well, surprisingly scientifically accurate. One One and his peoples are freaking great accuracy-wise, with a much more squatter appearance, thick column-like limbs, and elephantine-like feet. They even seem to have given the giants in the world of ice and fire reduced intelligence and brain size, which makes sense for an animal that probably wouldn't need smarts to survive, when it could rely on its size entirely. I can hardly say the same for other media. The Titans from Attack on Titan, for instance, are absolutely terrible, biomechanically and anatomically speaking. All the Titans would be crushed under the pressure. This isn't something limited to Attack on Titans. Most giants in media fail, biologically speaking, entirely. It would be awesome if more movies and shows took a more scientific approach and put some deeper thought into their giant designs. I'd love to see as much, if not more, attention to detail put into giant humanoids like those in Game of Thrones in the future. So Hollywood, give me some more biologically sound giants. It could be vastly more interesting and creative. While I'm on the subject, I might as well briefly discuss quadrupedal and non-humanoid giants as well, like King Kong. Again, the situation is similar to giant humanoids. Scaling a smaller organism up to be massive with the same exact proportions and everything isn't scientifically accurate. It simply wouldn't work. Certain adaptations and evolutionary sacrifices are necessary to maintain such a large height and size. Some of them the same with giant humanoids, such as larger and stronger heart, a bunch of the other organs that are maintain the circulatory system and blood pressure, and column-like legs and feet. Now, convergent evolution has shown us many times throughout history that organisms of truly massive height, somewhere or maybe along the lines of King Kong, consistently have evolved the same body shape and design independently. Sauropods, endrocotheres, and other animals evolved a similar shape and anatomy. It seems likely that an actual giant ape around the size of King Kong wouldn't look like this, but like this. So yeah, learn some science pop culture, and just look at the biomechanics and evolution to see what real giants, 
giant humanoids or whatnot, would look like. It would definitely yield some very super interesting results and concepts that I would love to see. And with that, this was Trey the Explainer, and thanks for watching. Before I go, I'd just like to say this video idea was partly inspired, if not mostly inspired, by the Planet Ferrana blog post about the subject, and it greatly interested me. The author of the blog writes some extremely interesting articles and discussions about biology, biomechanics, and evolution, so I would definitely suggest you go check out his original post as well as others. Again, sorry for the massive wait. Please accept my apology in the form of this colorized photo of a quagga made by me. Alright, see you guys next time.